I was just so touched, Nikki, by the conversation she shared with us that she had with President Trump for this young boy who was passing away in Florida. When you asked her, why does she stick with President Trump with all the allegations and the negative media and the things that are said, why does she stick with him? And it reminds me when people ask me about what President Trump's like and my first my first interaction with him. So, you know, I've seen I've seen the news and I'd seen him at his rallies, kind of the rally persona, if you will. And you and I, I think, watched every episode of The Apprentice back when he was, a, um, I don't know, it's not a talk show host, but a media personality, if you will. You're fired, right? We love that. And do you remember when I went in and got my, I had to go ask for the endorsement for the U.S. Senate campaign. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I had to do all this prep work. And I wasn't sure which President Trump I was going to get. Is it the, you're fired President Trump. The boardroom President Trump. Right. Or is it the rally President Trump? Right. <laughs> or is it the MSNBC version of President Trump? You know, um, I don't know. And fortunately, having had the experience I'd had in federal government, briefing cabinet members all the time, and and then in executive boardrooms at the time, I had just finished being one of the cabinet members for governor of Alaska I was really familiar with giving briefs to senior government officials. So going in and briefing him was not a particularly intimidating experience. I thought that was fine. I've been with a lot of bright people. So I felt prepared. I just didn't know really what to expect. So this was at the top of Trump Tower. And my team that was had been briefing me, they were very nervous for me. I mean, just <laughs> sweating and jittery. I think they're nervous I was going to bomb. I think they were nervous that I was so calm. I, I walked in and... <clears throat> I was first struck by how grandfatherly he was. And so just like what Pam was talking about, this doesn't ever come across in his kind of TV persona or even in the YouTube videos, whatever you watch of him being presidential. Uh, he, In his personal mannerisms, he's actually very paternal, very tender, very kind, very gentle. Uh, the other thing that struck me is having been in many executive boardrooms, oftentimes the only woman in the room, at no time did I ever feel demeaned. I was with him for about an hour. Never felt demeaned, condescended to, objectified in any way, which was shocking because that happens to me regularly. And at this point, it's just sort of like, you know, being a woman in an executive world. But at, at no point did I ever feel like this person who is so much more accomplished, so much more financially empowered, so much more powerful. I mean, imagine the experiences he's had as president. You as, didn't feel patronized at all. No, absolutely not. And in fact, there were many ways and words that he used to equalize me. And I thought, um, no, that's actually, that's factually inaccurate. I am not your peer um, in any way. I mean, he has... Uh, decades of more experience than me in so many ways, but he he went out of his way to honor me, which I thought was interesting. Uh, not not what I expected, not because of what people have said about him, but just based on my previous experiences, like everywhere, right? <laughs> and so, and then finally, I was just absolutely astounded by how incredibly intelligent he is, having been with really intelligent people, like a couple really intelligent people. Oh, you're married to one. I mean, I'm <laughs> married <laughs> married to one for sure. In all I'm, humility, I'm, you yes, say that, yes, right? And I'm having scared. gone to school with some, some really intelligent people and then knowing sure. really bright people, he is one of the most intelligent people I've ever met. So he would ask a question and then a normal response time, unlike how I'm talking now, by the way, I'll just acknowledge I've talked for a little bit here. A normal response time for someone on a question is about 90 seconds, sometimes two minutes. Like if you leave a voicemail, it's about 60 seconds is about how often somebody talks on a quick voicemail. And he would process what I was saying and cut me off at a 30 to 45 seconds. And then he would 
switch the subject to something totally different. So how are you going to win this race? And I would start to tell him my strategy. What are your polls? I'd start to tell him my strategy. Who supports you? I'd start to tell him my strategy. How are you going to win the world vote? I'd start to tell him. And he would just pepper me with questions. And it wasn't that he was interrupting and being rude. He was just that far ahead of me. And then he would fact check me. And so I would tell him, okay, here are my, here are my polling numbers. He, okay, hold on, let me check. And he'd call his pollster right there. So I knew apprentice style, having watched the show, if I were wrong, it would have been, you're fired, right? And I would have been shown the door. It would have been, you don't get the endorsement. Who supports you? I told him. So then he would, just like Pam said, he would just call a random Alaskan. He'd say to his secretary, yell at the door, get me so-and-so's number. And she'd say, so-and-so's on the line. <laughs> and he'd, and getting a cold call from the the president to say, hey, what do you think about Kelly Chewbacca? And then this went on for like an hour. But what I love about that story, too, I mean, you're talking about his, um, how paternal he was, how professional he was, how kind he was, how, um, sounds like even humble he was in terms of That's his right. interactions with you. <clears throat> what I also appreciate about it is how... Uh, insightful his questions were to you and how prepared he was yeah right? with no notes because he's he's lived for decades as an executive as a ceo right mm -hmm. he knows that he uh how to grasp a, a bunch of information um digest it get to the the core pieces the valuable pieces of it that he needs to um to make whatever decision he needs to make and just in terms of how you've talked about his interactions and in his in his interview with you for the endorsement um how well prepared he was, how you're saying he was even a step ahead of you. Um, that that makes me think about, hmm, I wonder if that's what he's also like in the Oval Office when he's, you know, making decisions. Yeah, good right? point. Um, and that gives me a lot of peace of mind <laughs> compared to what we currently oh, have, right, in um in in the Oval Office. So um that's a that's a really cool story. I mean I I really enjoyed the couple of times that uh I got to interact with him when I when I was when I was with you, and just also struck by just how approachable um, and down to earth he was, and that's why people love him, mm -hmm. right? He's not an elitist, and uh, that resonates uh, with uh, with the rest of America. Yeah, super gracious, and I really appreciate and respect how Pam is spending her time helping these people campaign. Yeah. I would love to see us have a red wave in 2024, which is what so many of us were expecting in 2022. And instead, in some parts of the country, we got a red trickle. And you know, now with what's happening in the House, I think it's hard to even say we got that. And so I think one of the questions that I want to chat with you about, and we might have to carry this over the break, is how do we guarantee, how do we get, maybe guarantee is a strong word, a red wave? How do we get a red wave in 2024? One of the things I'm realizing, we're, we're up against a really big mayor race here in Anchorage, right around the corner. Right. And one of the things I've noticed, I'm just going to be super direct about it because I know you can take it because we're married. <laughs> and I'm hoping our audience can because if you're watching a show called Stand, then you can weather a storm. I just want to just say, maybe it's not Democrats winning races or the left winning races. Maybe it's Republicans losing them. Can we just be blunt about it? When we don't show up to volunteer, when we won't hit the ground in the pavement for candidates like Pam's doing, when we won't open our pocketbooks and put our money where our complaining mouths are, then that's how we lose races across the country. Or so when we won't vote. When, like, and when you won't really freaking get out to. to vote, just yeah. do the basic work of speaking your voice through a vote instead of speaking it at the bar, on social media, and at the water cooler, then that's how you lose races. If you want to stop a losing streak, then do something. Yeah. And, you know, we talk a lot about, and we'll, I, we'll talk more about this after the break, but we talk a lot about the red wave, right? We want a red wave. I just... I, I I think a lot of people right now, um, I know I'm at this at this place at least, and just conversations I've had with people, things I'm reading, um, they the wave that they want is just a let's be in America again wave, right? Like um, 
whether it's it's not so much a color wave as it is a you know versus red versus blue, but a a let's just say a spangled wave, right? A return to what we're really supposed to be about because this administration has led us so far astray, so far astray of who we are as a country. I mean, it's shocking what they have done to tear down uh, our institutions, our values, um, our, our educational system. I mean, it is, it's, it's horrifying. And so uh, this is an opportunity coming up in this election for us to to vote for people and leaders who are going to pull us back from what I would say the precipice of the abyss. Um, because if if we don't, uh, we are going to not recognize our country and we're going to be passing down to our children is a country that is not the America that we knew. I think that's a good point. What I would tell you... It's a great point. It's a great point. <laughs> is that spangled wave right now? If you, I love that that picture, is encompassed by values that are red. Yes. So it would be a free market economy. It would be secure borders. It would be resource development. So we're not dependent on foreign adversaries for energy. It'd be our traditional values. Those are the kinds of things that we are fighting for. But we're, I would say, here's a little bit of Nikki and Kelly back and forth, but I would say that there are a lot of Americans who are not traditional Republicans. I think that's fair. Who are part of that spangled Who now agree wave, with that. Who, who, yeah, who are. Who Which are, means our party is getting bigger.